three, two, one. So the the first song that I had learned all of the words to, I was about, uh, well, I was three years old, was Wham's Careless Whisper. And um, my sister used to always love talking about it because I would be uh, walking around the house going, no, go on, dance again. Not going to dance again. Like, it was awesome. So I still hear it. And uh, when I started playing a Deadpool, I love it. Just there, loved it. Wait, Deadpool <laughs> played that song? I don't remember that. <laughs> only like a lot. Wow. How did <laughs> so. I miss? I watched. I only mean, saw it once. So that's my be why. You, oh, you, were, you weren't joking? No, I wasn't. I'm a, I saw it <laughs> once. I mean, please forgive me. Please forgive me. I know not what I do. So, uh, um, if you want to banish him now, I understand, <laughs> but we do have to get through the show. Yeah, so. right. We'll yeah, exactly. To, uh, uh, <laughs> to banish your your lackey, your 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 little. I'm I'm. By the way, I have decided. Uh, well, I didn't decide it. He decided it for me, and I had to accept it. I am mm-hmm. your your part time minion. I guess is that the official. Well, you wouldn't be my part-time minion. You're my lackey, my tech lackey. Oh, whoa, because... whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't even get minions. That... I know that you call your hey, kids your minions. Hey, my minions, no, I... they're my spawn. I... Oh, okay, <laughs> like... so only your kids can be minions. I see how it yes. is. I see how it and is. And then their children will be my minions this, as well. This doesn't hurt. This does not hurt me. No, I'm, I have just been, <laughs> I mean, I what a sad day. You know, when I come home today and I report to my wife, oh, honey, what kind of day you have? Well, I got demoted. From minion <laughs> to lackey. Yeah. But, it, but if you adopted him. No, don't don't minion. do that. No. <laughs> don't do that. I, don't adopt I think him. he's like super older than me. I, I actually I do not exist within the, the framework of uh chronological uh limitations. I am youth. So <laughs> that's that's you know, how old are you? That is I true. He's sure. He is a huge fan of the um, Sean Mendes and Ed Sheeran's. Like, <laughs> I don't. I don't know where. Okay, I I do a top one hundred, but actually, Sean Sean Mendes had never been in my top one hundred, and Ed Sheeran was had one song in my top one hundred, and that was Castle on the Hill, not Shape of You, not Shape of You. Okay, I like that song. That's, he wrote it about me. Wow. Like, yeah. 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 So. <laughs> okay, so so what they're what they're doing what they're doing is they're venting or they're 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 vamping. I call this vamping. Are you guys vamping? Is that what it is? Um, yeah, you're vamping um, while I promote. And now we're we're fetching. Now we're ready to begin the real show. So go ahead and do your oh. thing, man. Well, um, you know, I am the Grand Duchess Lydia Sophia Tatiana Morticia von Elfberg of the Kingdom of Ruritania, and I'm also the host of Morticia's Micronational Minutes, and so most people call me Mort anyway. It's a much shorter than my full name. But uh, with us tonight, Paul, we have uh, the King, George, of uh, George the Two of George Slobovia. the Two, I love it. 2.0. So, um, now, I... Uh, uh, George, you were actually with us at the Microcon uh, this year, uh, which was amazing, was it not? Yes, I was at the 2015 and the 2017, and they ah. both spectacular, and they've set a high bar for me to beat, but I'm kind of getting ahead of things. Well, yeah, I mean, I wasn't at the 2015 uh, one because uh, there were some some complications, and I was needed uh, at the at the Britannian Embassy, but um, I think this one was just super baller but uh there's been like a lot of talk about that vice video right and um which was great it was awesome but people saw like that one little sound bite i did about uh being uh against the vile vermin of squirrels and so i thought that i would do like the whole presentation um for the audience if if you're cool with that as well Yes. Sure. It's, a, it's right. a good presentation. I'd love to see it again. It was awesome. And I even like changed the slides a bit. So uh, if if he's got it up there, I'm not sure. Hold, hold on. I'm getting it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So 
um, if you're looking, of course, at the title, I know that everybody, th they call it the squirrel presentation, but it's really about micronational dangers um, and the enemy number one, or Numa Ein. So um, if we go to the next slide, I constantly get asked and about this and if you're actually one of uh, one of my people I call a friend you'd be able to see like the number of things that I get tagged in with squirrels and yes all micronationals having a good sense of humor right so um, the reason behind uh, Ruritania's stance against these vile vermin is uh, my grandmother had a home that she had purchased uh, back in the 60s that uh, had a fig tree and she loved figs and uh, she was so excited and this uh, these squirrels would come and they'd steal all the figs or they would take just one bite and then just leave them there for her to you know cry about and be sad and like she uh, so she hated them and then I turned I I was born and I turned about five or six ish and I was visiting her and it was raining like a whole month straight and I said uh, grandma do we need to start building an ark and she said yes and you gather all the animals two by two but you leave the squirrels so all squirrels have been banned from Mauritania so that's just how it is <laughs> believe it or not I have my own tale about uh, vandalist squirrels yes more than 10 years ago, before we fully understood the extent of the squirrel menace, uh, my wife was making the mistake of feeding squirrels in our backyard. And then one of them tried to claw their way through the kitchen window screen. Ugh. And after that, there was no more feeding of squirrels, and squirrels were banished from the area. I bet! You know, uh, uh, one of our... Uh, we, well, we can talk about that later. But um, the, the biggest parts that we need to know is, like, why uh why should they all be banned and then why how do we keep our borders safe and and when do we need to act and now you go to the next slide so, so yes this is uh this one's actually very important uh there's large amounts of attacks and honestly uh before uh, the microcon, of course, that's when I wrote this uh, presentation. Uh, these were the top four results when I just Googled squirrel attacks. And uh, I mean, as you can see, they're like attacking nursing homes, they're attacking children. This isn't cool. Like our elderly and our children need protection. <laughs> like, Well, and they're also attacking your critical infrastructure, right? More power outages have been caused wait, by Wait, don't get ahead of us. <laughs> like, right. spoiler right. alert <laughs> like, so let's go ahead and go on to the next slide <laughs> um oh well the next one's diseases they do spread diseases like rabies and they carry ticks and things that carry bugs like who befriends bugs they're gross like ew so no hey um, hold on if i may may i speak please yes um my daughter's nickname is Bugs, so I'm a little bit triggered right now. Oh my gosh. Jeez. We just lost all the etymologists as well, you realize, right? right. Uh, all the yes. bug scientists worldwide are going, that's it, my out. The, uh, the, the, the amount of cringe at, at the nicknaming her of, of Bugs. No, that's cute. That's really cute. But um, they have actually started carrying their own special kind of encephalitis. Um, which causes zombie-like symptoms in people, which includes, like, fever and chills, of course, right, you know, before they get infected. And then, uh, or once they've been infected, before they, like, you know, die. But confusion and difficulty walking like zombies. I'm not saying that they're starting the zombie apocalypse, but I'm also not saying that they aren't going to. So, anyway, next slide. <laughs> um, now... Like King Church was mentioning about right. the power outages. Um, this chart uh, actually shows, um, and there's some links to it, and if anybody has questions about my sources, you feel free to contact me. Um, the, the state of Montana had 560 power outages uh, in 2015, and the city of Austin, Texas, 
alone had 400. And of these power outages were ones specifically caused by squirrels. That was 27% of all of the power outages in the United States alone were caused by them chewing on the wires. That's a lot of malicious intent. And I personally, I don't like the dark, kind of scared of the dark. I ain't down with it, you know. So, yeah. Um, Next slide. Now, there is definitely an underground plot afoot. Um, There's a site called Cyber Squirrel One uh, that they write all of these uh, uh, they put it news about other attacks on humans from squirrels from uh, what seems like the perspective of the squirrels. Now, I don't know if this domain is actually uh, being run by William Collier of the Prussian Kingdom, but I wouldn't put it past him. Uh, He is a squirrel sympathizer. um, And uh, actually recently I got tagged on to Twitter on Twitter to the cyber scroll one people somebody like said hey did you know that she hates squirrels yeah i was told them to bring it <laughs> so um next uh now for how you can act about protecting your home and your territory against these vile vermin um you need to uh, train your citizens. Uh, here's actually in this slide, I have a picture of my son out with our uh, one of our many squirrel targets. Um, King George, while you were at the embassy during the uh, the uh, reception, uh, did you actually happen to take a walk on the grounds and see it? I did not, unfortunately. I missed the chance. That's okay. I I think I I think I walked the French over there, but um, yes. So. My my daughter, the Princess Charlotte Dorothea, is actually a trained sniper, and um, Slobovia has an awesome thing that we're going to talk about too about uh, their their anti squirrel methods. Um, so the next slide is that we also promote the breeding of hunting animals. Um, this uh, is a picture of one of my. Uh, late puppies, Vibka. She uh, actually broke her toe. <laughs> bolting after a squirrel one time. She got him, but she limped back, and it was so sad. A little puppy in a cast. I mean, it's like so sad. But they, yeah, it's terrible. But they sprint, um, and they, they always catch their prey, like always. So the next slide is our last one, is that there are these vile, perverse, thieving uh, biting vermin scum that should all be eradicated. And uh, this one um, meme, actually, I get tagged on a ridiculous amount of time of that albino squirrel that just stares at you while rubbing its nipples. I don't know why. Who 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 would take this picture? Is what I have more of a problem with than, than the fact that it's staring at you. But why is it staring at you? You know, there's... They're pretty bad. I, I don't dig it. But in a nutshell, <laughs> that's actually the, uh, the the squirrel presentation. So I hope that other people will will get more of an understanding of why Ruritania has had a long uh, history of, of by abandoning these vile vermin. So, um, but now, since we did that. Uh, at microcon it feels like uh and i don't know if you've noticed that squirrels have actually started uh militarizing their forces more because i'm so vocal about it and i've gotten the word out so they've they've actually uh like i would say within the week after the con uh there was the attack on prospect park where five people were were brutally attacked by a, a bloodthirsty squirrel. I mean, I think uh, I think either you or Rankin like tagged me on that, right? I think I did, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Um, and then just recently, even uh, like a couple weeks ago, there was the uh, there's another attack uh, in New Orleans with three people being attacked by by a, a rabbit squirrel, I believe. So um, they say that they caught the squirrel, which is good, and hopefully they'll put him down soon. So. Well, I think I should send them to Guantanamo. Right. Maybe they will. If they do their jobs right, they will send them to Guantanamo. <laughs> but um, so Slobovia has the anti-squirrel squad. Right. right? Exactly. Yes. The, the SAS. The Slobovian anti-squirrel the SAS. Squad. And I love SAS. <laughs> like, so much. <laughs> and, the, but, and their motto is, we will not fail. Nice. Nice. Um, now I don't know if uh, if uh, Paul's putting up the picture yet. Uh, right, right. And is the new lieutenant in that as well? <laughs> Where he's the he's the younger kid shooting the shooting the targets. Yes. Yellow coolness for the little the little goggles. Oh, yes. called dwarf goggles, sure. <laughs> um, yeah, but Spencer is actually, uh, he is a new lieutenant, right? Yeah, he's a uh, ranking son. He just uh, just turned of age to be commissioned in our regular forces. He had been a cadet, and he's our first cadet to graduate to the regular officer corps. Oh, I see. Because I've been hearing all this. I never, I never even thought about it. Uh, but, like, uh, the introduction, apparently, from my uh, my mother meeting um, Spencer was a bit a bit of a, a giggle, so um, yeah, I uh, I actually didn't get to talk really a lot, a lot to him, but I noticed that the uh, Slobovians choose to y'all your uniforms are very like Navy esque, right? Um, yeah, because <laughs> your whole crew, your whole squad that arrived. It was all like in these uniforms. It was epic. I thought everyone except my wife. Yes, <laughs> she's not well, navy. She's not. No. So she 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 refuses. She doesn't. She's not interested. She's just the queen consort. So. Oh, okay. Uh, and uh, how long has Slobovia been around? We've been established. Uh, well, uh, thirty plus years. It was the nineteen eighties. I'd have to check exactly when we first formed. And there's a little bit of contention about the history there, but what year exactly it was? But it's at least thirty years. And what kind of uh, what kind of response do you give people when you're telling them about being a micronationalist for the first time? Like they've people, never, they've they they they're not they're unknowing about our our lives. <laughs> if it's somebody who already knows me in other matters, they're not too surprised. Yes. <laughs> if it's somebody who, like, complete random stranger on the street, hi, I'm the king of Slobovia, they're like, yeah, get away from me. I'm not going to give you any money. Right. <laughs> oh, it's like uh, Eric's uh, presentation on the, the emperor of, um, of America. Yeah. Uh, yeah. San Francisco, yeah. Yeah, he, uh, uh, it was uh, it was pretty interesting. I love that the fact that it was San Francisco that just like totally just welcomed him and loved him. Um, Emperor Norton. Emperor Norton. That was his name. Yeah, Emperor Norton. Uh, but yes. Uh, so what what made you decide to 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 begin Slobovia? Like, it started kind of as a joke that went too far on an online bulletin board. And we just, we don't know when to stop, to be honest. It's been 30 plus years and we're still telling the joke. That's amazing. <laughs> like, that's that's pretty epic. I dig that. Um, yeah. Uh, 30 years ago on the internet, like in the 80s? Yeah, we were on a bullet board back then. It's 40s. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, I, well, I guess not. Uh, I don't do math really well. But... Yeah, the internet was all just bullet like message boards, wasn't it? Mostly, yeah. So the anti squirrel squad. Let's get back to that because it was founded at first, and then it had been decommissioned. I did my presentation. Afterwards, I got approached by like half a dozen of the the attendees, going, "I hate squirrels too," you know, <laughs> including Melasia, um, the uh, Kingdom of Jupiter. And and then I was thrilled when I saw that the 
that y'all had an anti-squirrel squad. It's like, yes, totally. <laughs> so, um, so y'all go out and train like how often? Uh, and do you have kills of the week? Like, what do you? Uh, we don't train that often. Um, you probably don't need to. <laughs> yeah, well, there's that too. Yes, I mean we're just that good, right? Right. Uh, there's also certain laws that we're, you know, obliged to obey when we're in our host country. Uh-huh. About, you know, things like use of explosives. So my diplomatic immunity isn't going to work while I'm at uh, the microcon uh, in Toronto? It'll work with us. It'll work with you. Okay. Well, good. <laughs> Will it work with Toronto Police Services? Uh... Well, I get out of a lot of stuff here anyway, so it's fine. Uh, but can I can I ask a question? Yes. I'm 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 just a low life lackey. Every once in a while, I have a question. What mm -hmm. what what particular? They look like airsoft guns in that picture uh, that that you have here. What 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 particular type of airsoft guns are there that you're using? I'm not sure what. Uh, so that's ranking in the sun. I'm not sure what they've got. Uh, are they gas? They, they look like maybe they're... Uh, I think they're either spring or gas-powered, yeah. yeah. I actually want to say they're spring-powered, but I'm not sure. I do a show called Full Auto, so anything remotely related to guns, i got to find out more information. Well, personally, I have a uh, Steyr AUG Airsoft that's uh, battery-operated. Oh, that's pretty cool. I used to sell Airsoft in uh, the flea markets. I did that for a long time, but now, now I collect real guns. But I, I do still like my air salts. I, I still have a nice metal Beretta, uh, which is uh, it's spring spring loaded, but it's like 300 feet per second, so it's kind of up there for air salt. And I also have a Broomhander Mauser, which also is metal, which is very nice. One of the things that we're hampered by in Canada is that the Canadian gun laws say if you fire something more than 500 feet per second, it's a firearm, and it's subject to firearm licensing and restrictions so don't, don't get me started on canadian gun laws B, bb guns <laughs> like do that a bb gun that can fire more than 500 feet per second could be classified as a firearm in canadian law well i got uh the princess i know we're way off topic here now. i'm, <laughs> no, I'm sorry well, I'm sorry. well, well I'm <laughs> uh the princess charlotte Garcia. she actually has the uh the the red rider uh the rifle that uh, you, for you poke story. your eye out. You'll, You'll shoot your, your eye, eye out. out. Okay. You'll shoot yes. your eye out. Or you poke yes. your eye out. Whatever. But she won't because she's a trained sniper and she's pretty awesome at it. Um, <laughs> else is I have. My uh, uh, my son Prince Prince Nicholas. He actually um, for we went to Dragon Con recently and one of his cosplays was to be Jack Burton from Big Trouble in Little China and uh, the gun that I. Uh, had gotten him for it, it turned out to be an actual BB gun. I had no idea. So it came with like bullets and stuff. Like I, I thought it was just going to be like a toy gun. But yeah, so he got a, he got a little automatic rifle <laughs> kind of BB gun for no, no particular reason. But um, so I did notice that recently that the SAS had a, uh, uh, some some squirrels coming close to the property, like think well, Rankin. They now have that air support, right? They've got that hawk that's taking up residence. He's yes. keeping the property squirrel free. Yes, that's pretty awesome. Like I dig it. We've uh, we've actually found on uh, on our grounds uh, a one of the couple feral cats has uh, captured one of them, decimated it. Like, ripped it to shreds and then left it in our rose gardens. Um, so that was very pleasant. That was a warning to the others. Yes, it was a warning to the others because there are no squirrels found on Ruritanian soil. <laughs> Not live ones. <laughs> so, but I, um, I, I won't say anything. <laughs> I know nothing. <laughs> right. <laughs> so let's, uh, we've, we've kind of glossed over the microcon con, or the microcon from this year. Um, but
But we can the the next microcon in in 2019, which is going to be hosted by you, the King of Slobovia. I am so pumped. Yes. And and the hosting city, of course, will be Toronto. Correct. The, what they call the GTA, the Greater Toronto Area. It'll be west of downtown Toronto. Uh, but I mean, Toronto is a huge city. Uh, Three and a half million people in Toronto proper, and I think GTA is now like seven million or something like that. Lots of things to see and do, and lots of trouble you can get into if you're not careful. Oh, sweet! Well, because you know, uh, when I was going to go pick up the princely couple at, uh, from Egg, uh, from Egg Mort, um, I had stepped away to go to the powder room uh, from sitting at the bar, um, and I apparently I was gone. So long, even though I told the bartender uh, that I was leaving six times, she thought that I left. And she actually called the airport police on me <laughs> while, I was, <laughs> while I was at the airport, at the international terminal at the Atlanta airport. It was fantastic. So I was totally looking forward to getting in trouble in Toronto. <laughs> well, then, then it'll be truly an international incident, won't it? Yes. <laughs> Well, I think that, uh, it, you know, it, since it's an international airport, it counts as uh, international problem, uh, you know, crimes. And but it, I didn't walk out on my tab. I paid my tab. <laughs> like, I'm just going to say. <laughs> if you go to molosia.org, that's where I found it. M-O-L-O-S-S-I-A.org. It's, it's pronounced Molossia. Molo- pardon me. For, I, I apologize. Forward uh, slash microcon forward slash microcon 2019.html. You will find a splash page up. I assume more will be. It says coming soon, so I'm sure more will be there as it becomes available. Or more well, I, I thought we were we were purchasing. So it was, I thought we had microcon 2019.com now. I have to check. Yeah, well, that's what l- I l- thought. Let me check. Let me check. Microcon. <laughs> I just Googled it, and that's what came up, 2019.com. So let's hope that something comes up. That's uh, It says, this site under development. So okay, well. you got the domain name. Okay, but that's where you'll eventually go. So right now I have it on the screen behind you guys. It says Microcon 2019 Toronto, Ontario, <laughs> Canada. That's right. right. Keep, keep looking. It's there. It's there. Trust me. Trust oh, me. There. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. so, um, so you could go to microcon 2019 it will be up and then there'll be more information there yes um and of course if people want to bother anyone about the microcon they should contact the person who's in charge of the microcon com which is the committee that is organizing the next micronational conference do you know who that person is paul his majesty king george the second of slobovia george the two George the two, <laughs> and you know he's, and you know he's George the two because he's wearing George the two's underwear. Yes, you bet, you bet. You bet. <laughs> I knew that lion was going to come back to bite me. Oh, you know you. it, you know it, you know it. Can't let that one okay, slide. So I, I need to uh, just clarify one thing. Microconcom is the microcon committee is the organizing umbrella for all the microcons. Right. So the vision is that going forward, when people want to host the next umpteen microcons, the microconcom is the group that's going to assess the zillion different people saying, ooh, I want to do it, and giving the A or an A. It's oh. like the International Organizing Committee for the Olympics, the IOC, but, you know, less bribery and corruption. Or like people less bribery. <laughs> well, the... Uh... I can tell you that the amount of people asking my myself as Minister of Foreign Affairs for the Kingdom of Britannia uh, and Grand Duchess and Miss Microworld, but the number of people asking me about, oh, oh I want to host it. Oh, can we host it in this country that's like um, co- Korea? I think I saw somebody who's wanting to host it in Korea. I was like, I don't think that America can fly to Korea right now. Uh, it's okay. Wait, you're okay. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, you mean? But we don't talk. We don't talk about macronational news and micronations. 
<laughs> like, so. <laughs> okay, in the landmass referred to as Korea, there is a part of a landmass which is referred to as North Korea, a part of a landmass which is referred to as South Korea. If you're going to South Korean landmass, then it is possible for you to go there. If you're going to North Korean landmass, it is highly doubtful. Okay. Or you may just not be able to come back. Yeah, I like going home. So <laughs> I'm not going to go and get stuck in the so, foreign land. But, I just wanted to touch on one point there, though, which is that I've heard some flack about the fact the next one's going to be in Canada. People I, are saying, why is it going to be outside of the U.S.? They have to understand, micronationalism is not a U.S.-only concept. It's not. Right? Thank you. <laughs> and so I'm actually happy that we're hosting this one in Canada. And, you know, I'd like to eventually have one in Europe, have one in Asia, have one in Africa, maybe even Australia. I'm sure South America, you know, all of the populated continents. I'd love to do Antarctica as well. If, if Archduke Travis can figure out how to get us to West Antarctica, hey. we'll do it. Hey, I, I support Flandrensis, okay? Could, could like, you, you're burying the lead. Could you tell the studio audience that doesn't know what uh, micronations <laughs> are, what, what that word is you just said, Floratura for our Flandrensis. That. Uh, it, it is a micronation. That is uh, off the coast of Antarctica. It is about six islands. That is so cool. I just said it, was, um, it, it is. It's cool. No, no sorry. Um, he zoned out on the word cool. He said cool. No, no it's, <laughs> it's It's Antarctica. It's more than cool. Yeah, it's exactly. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a mega cool. cool. Right, right. And, it's, and uh, it is uh, led by the Grand uh, Duke, um, uh, Niels Vermeesh. Who uh, I love. He's adorable. And he's got an adorable little baby. That is so cute. I just want to cannibalize the baby. Mm. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um. Wow! <laughs> Awkward! Awkward! <laughs> I love babies! Hey, I, I hope he invites you over to his house soon. Probably not going they, to. They taste so much better with salt. That's, it's that's objectively true. <laughs> Baby back, baby back, baby back, lives. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. No, but I, I don't cannibalize babies. I'm sure that's going to be the one soundbite that everybody <laughs> like, just listen to now. <laughs> Good one. So, yes. Perfect. Anyway, um, but he had a problem with, uh, initially, they have, they have resolved their issues between Flandrensis and uh, Zit, uh, West Arctica, yeah. which was uh, run by King... No, he's Emperor. Archduke. 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 Travis. Archduke, Archduke Henry. Travis. Yes. Who is super duper tall, but yet can't be seen <laughs> in the group photos, which I think is hilarious. I think I'm but, he is, actually. Oh, really? I, I can't be seen in the group photo from the, from the gala, either. I was a little upset. I should have stood in the front. But. <laughs> Aren't you like three foot seven, though? I am a very tall woman, I'll have you know. I am uh, five nine. Wow, you are tall. No, I'm kidding. I'm five seven. I don't know why I said five nine. <laughs> five seven. My wife is five nine. Oh, is she? Yep. Five nine and above, I consider Amazons. If I have to, like, you know, like, look up, like, that's. And you're, like. That's, object that's objective reasoning right there. Well, it's it's true. Uh, they are Amazons. I just said it's objective <laughs> reasoning. I was, I was agreeing with you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can't throw out big words at me. Sorry about that. But, so, <laughs> I'm sorry. We digress, George. We are let's digressors. About, this is what we do. Let's talk about the, uh, the microcon com. Sure. So, the committee is made up of, like, the, the three founding member or like three founding nations the, right the first the first three hosts of microcon so obviously 2015 was Milosevic, 2017 was Ruritania, 2019 will be Slobovia. Yes. so then those three going forward will be the arbiters of the selection of future microcons so for microcon 2021 2023 2025 whatever uh people will put a package together submit it to us we'll review the packages We'll uh, vote on them and make a selection. And the intent is that each uh, microcon will be announced at the preceding microcon. So at right. 2019, we'd like to be able to announce who gets 2021. And then in 2021, and announce 2023 and so on. Right. And uh, um, 
this this was one of the parts of of your presentation that I really I really dug was um how the last presentation unless it's going to be me doing squirrels again um will be uh like the the the, the new next host. select you're right the new host like uh interview I guess if you will kind of a kind of a presentation for them to sell themselves to to us right exactly or, yeah it, I think that's yourself. Great. Yeah. Oh, and uh, by the way, it, wasn't Slobovia uh, providing us lunch that day during the, the conference? We did, we did co-sponsor lunch with two other nations. Yeah, so two other nations. I, and I'm bad because I don't remember who they were. I want to say one of them was the Arican Empire, but I'm not sure. I believe that one was the Arican Empire. I know that Oh, well, Ruritania went and f uh, f fetched it, and the other one was none other than Malasia. Right. So, yes. um so much love to uh, Eric and uh, and Kevin for for and you of course for feeding us that day. Even though I was the best sandwich hander outer on the Did planet. Did you say sandwiches? I yes. oh, you gotta make me some sandwiches. <laughs> It was it was pretty it was pretty baller. Like uh, my mother had ordered that all of these very delicious subs from Baldino's, which I can't eat because I am a celiac. <laughs> they all shouldn't be cut because she meant to bring in all of her fancy knives and all this stuff. Well, she forgot them because it, it was a hectic event, and so I'm outside with uh, her royal highness uh, Juliana, my sister. Um, and I had a switchblade in my car that I had got from work for uh, points that I had earned. I, I know it's a weird story. What do you do? What the hell? I'm a database administrator. <laughs> so, you know, I got I got points for doing a good job. Uh, like they call them kudos, and, and I got a switchblade. Um, I got to turn those points in, and I said I'm going to buy myself something that I wouldn't normally buy myself. And I chose the switchblade. So I was outside with this thing, like, cutting sandwiches. I had all the Italian ones. Uh, she had all the clubs. And I was like, all right, you want the American or you want the Italian? I know you want the sausage. <laughs> so I was like, well, it's great. Yeah. Hey, by, by the way, we got about 10 minutes left. <laughs> we have 10 minutes left? Yep, we're 50 minutes into the show. Okay, okay. So that's right. Okay. <laughs> so... The committee, uh, well, let's talk about, because we've discussed how, how important and crucial it is that these people who have, and the new, the new one hasn't been selected yet, correct? Well, right. Well, we're still setting up for 2019. Uh, well, I, I know. I know exactly how long it takes to set up a, a microcon because firsthand knowledge, okay, I was a mess. My mother rocked it. <laughs> like hands down but she had been planning the microcon since uh she had uh the day she like left anaheim in 2015 it takes every bit of like strength and energy and gumption like that you can get <laughs> and that's that's an important point because i, I want to say one of the reasons we're making people go through this application process is to make sure they understand this is going to be a lot of work. If you're running a micronation out of your bedroom, and like you're the only person in your micronation, right. you're going to be doing all this work yourself, and you're going to go nuts. You need to have a fairly well-established micronation with a few people who are willing to pitch in if you don't want to go like kill yourself putting this thing together, I think. Um, and it's not cheap. You know, uh, a, a lot of that... Uh, uh, the, the microcon this year, like I mean, it came out of the Ruritanian coffers themselves. Um, so you know, that's I and I I would hate to make attendees purchase tickets. I think that that's it defeats what we're doing. You know, uh, the one thing that I will ask of you, King George, is that there better be a ball, okay? Like I know. That all of these dudes in micronationalism, and it is too many dudes, all right? There are not enough women micronationalists. But they, they all take ballroom dancing. I want to go ballroom dancing. So, like, I demand there be a ball. We'll see what we can do. Mm. Oh, so, no <laughs> commitment. Oh, like, breaking news, not, breaking news. It's called diplomacy. <laughs> diplomacy. 
I like hey. this idea of a ball. If it can happen, I'll make it happen. Hey, by the because way, I know. Hey, yeah. we have we have over a thousand views. Really? Yeah. yeah. Hi, everybody. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> so, um, but the the uh, the conference. I think is a great place uh, for us to to even say, you know, like things that we're doing in our nation, like the the fact that uh, there were so many countries that do such great work for the the macrosphere around them, you know. Um, I think that's just beautiful. Um, uh, Ruritania is starting to work with a, a charity here uh, called the Last Unfound Youth um, that's located within Atlanta, but. Um, does Slobovia have these kinds of, of pro- programs as well? Or do y'all prefer to keep that private? Uh, like, cause there's no, I'm not trying to make we it sound like. We don't really have an organized, um, centralized, um, charitable works foundation, let's say. Okay. Uh, personally, myself, uh, this year, you know, 2016 was an ugly year. So the end of 2016. It is. <laughs> like, so the end of 2016, I said, I'm going to make 2017 the year uh, where I try to be just a little bit extra nice. So I'm trying consciously every month this year to identify a new charity and donate some extra money to it. So I'm, I'm making a conscious effort this year out of my own pocket just to support a little bit more of the community around me. That's nice. That's wonderful. Yeah, you know, that's what people don't get. You know, a lot of times we get to use this as kind of a platform to, to help, you know, larger, uh, larger things that, that desperately need. Those kinds of even small, small uh, charitable goodwills is like awesome. Yep. But um, so, uh, what have you already decided uh, will be at the next microcon? Nothing. Really, other than the fact that it's <laughs> going to be a similar format to the last two microcons, where there's some stuff happening before, some stuff happening after. During the day, there's going to be a conference, and during the evening, there's going to be, you know, dinner, gala, hopefully dancing. Uh, the other thing that I'll say is that we're going to be trying to press into service as many of our citizens as we can to staff this. We've got, I think, 40 or 50 citizens, uh, according to our citizen rules. I'd like to have them all there and all in uniform, you know, as pages, as runners, as assistants, as whatever's needed just to make sure that, you know, we've got that, that next level of professionalism. Oh, that's uh, awesome. I, I, yeah, you want that kind of, uh, that, that's really, it's really epic. I like that. <laughs> the one thing I, I want to say, um, without giving too much away, like 2015 and 2017 were very good microcons. I think that every microcon needs to set the bar for the one after it. And so we're going to try to overachieve compared to 2015, 2017. We're setting ourselves a high goal because 2015 and 2017 were pretty awesome in a lot of ways. But we're going to try and knock it out of the park. Okay. Um, I did. I really enjoyed it uh, this year. I mean, I got to I got to go to some places, uh, you know, on, on my touring of, uh, of the because that's what. Yeah, I mean, you can't just sit in a, in a conference room and like watch all of these presentations like for three days straight you know you get to go out and explore like everything and so it was nice get getting to to tour people um i think i, I took a group out to um <laughs> it was kind of silly but I took a group out to a drag show <laughs> right. out here yeah. um and it was pretty awesome but i missed the uh diplomatic reception mostly i made an appearance i made yep. a, a very short appearance all right <laughs> But uh, so uh, what uh, what big news is coming out of Slobovia uh, in the next couple of months besides more updates on the on the con? Good question. Uh, <laughs> whatever, whatever my chancellor doesn't say no to. Yeah, <laughs> that seems my chancellor's main job is to say no to me. No, we can't afford that. Is that Rankin? That's Rankin. <laughs> yeah. exactly. He's pretty awesome. <laughs> oh, uh, I didn't. Um, I was going to have him on, but he was like, "No, no, 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 no." King, the, the king's the face. I, I just handle everything else. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> he likes to be known as the power behind the throne. Oh. He doesn't. Well, he doesn't want to be. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I mean, yeah. Do you have like a good uh, a good story you can share of of the two of y'all? 
causing shenanigans or hij- I prefer hijinks. Well, we were actually roommates back in university, believe it or uh, not. And we were both co-founders of, of Slovovia. Uh, so there's too many stories to tell, but some of them I probably shouldn't tell, you know. <laughs> That's a shame. <laughs> so okay. when, we were, uh, when we were roommates, though, uh, he had a samurai sword hanging on the wall in the living room in our apartment. And I'm walking home one day from, from university, and somebody had thrown away a hedge trimmer. So I grabbed the hedge trimmer, I took it home, and I took down his samurai sword, and I hit it, and I hung the hedge trimmer up in its place. Okay. And he comes in, he's like, what the hell is that? And I said, I thought you should upgrade. <laughs> I didn't appreciate that. I mean, it would have been cooler if it was a chainsaw, because of the fact that I love Bruce Campbell. But, you know, hedge trimmer's pretty epic. That's pretty cool to, to swap out. But I have to I have to thank you, King, uh, King George, for coming on. Because now I, I've got to go and talk about micronationalism and wars within the microsphere. And um, But thanks so much. And thank you again for having me. Yes. <laughs> all right. So, um, all right, Paul, are you ready? Oh, okay. Well, um, we, uh, I'm going to discuss with the world about wars within the microsphere. And they're, they're, the number of people that think that this happens all the time, uh, in some countries it does, uh, in some countries they don't. Most of the time, uh, micronations tend to have civil wars within themselves. Um, so I know that Austin Asia we used to have uh, civil wars between the Emperor Jonathan the first and his sister. Um, but it was because he was emperor since he was like 10 or 12. But uh, he's he's much older now or seven. He was actually seven years old. I have a live studio audience that's like giving me hand signals in the background. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> she's, she's, it was it was it, it was this. Seven, seven. <laughs> so, so yeah, Emperor Emperor Jonathan has has ruled Austin Asia since he was seven, um, and he's a super awesome dude, and he helps run the micro wiki. But he's supposed to be updating a page for me because I gave him an entry into, and you'll actually like this. I should have sent you a link to this before. There is a face palm micronational exhibit. So photos of micronations uh, or micronational leaders doing face palms. Wow. And uh, <laughs> I, uh, I actually submitted two, and he, he posted two from some people. But the one that I really wanted him to, to post, I had drew uh, a face on my you palm. You mean you had drawn? I drawn. I had drawn. No. I had drawn yes. a... Yeah, and I wanted I wanted that on the my on the on the Micronational Face Palm Museum, but didn't work. he put he put the other one, which is fine. It's whatever. It's just whatever. Anyway, so, so let's get <laughs> so, to this because we got to wrap this up soon. We're, we're, yes, we're well, Micronational here. Micronational Wars uh, tend to be uh, directed towards more established nations by nations that haven't really been established and there's not really anything uh against them for it you know they're just trying to make a name for themselves and that's great you know i applaud it i'm down for those kinds of efforts but you can do better things (laughs) than that because in the end what kind of what what is what's your end game like are you actually planning on on coming over to uh to go and, and and storm into an embassy and take it over? You're going to usurp this throne that I'm actually sitting on? <laughs> Are you going to... Um... The Roritanian <laughs> throne will not be usurped! Absolutely not. And, uh, I, I mean, personally, I've actually had death threats before. A guy told me that I was going to be hanged and then pub- uh, then executed by firing squad. I was like, this is a little like extreme, you know, harsh. I was like, gonna just do uh, 
karaoke contests or dance contests? Um, you know, what, do you want to like try and shots? Like, I don't, what do you want? Like, I wasn't thinking. Beheadings? Death so much beheadings. <laughs> Be- well, who doesn't want to do beheadings? I do not. What? I Matt? objectively do not. They tend to get a little messy. Like, uh, you don't. You're, you're revealing way too much right now. You really should yeah, walk this back. I, <laughs> no, but micronational wars, there are, like, cyber attacks, but they they tend to just end up being, like, a whole bunch of trolling on the Internet. Um, but uh, there, it does leave a bad taste in the mouth of other micronations who see these kinds of attacks from uh, the aggressors, or well, for the aggressors. Not for the people who were the victims of said attacks. I'm I'm always but for the aggressors. You're for the aggressors? Yeah. Well Although not in this case because you know I'm a good lackey, so I, not in this this is the exception. This okay. The exception, so. I'm gonna say because Britannia no, 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 uh good. we we're we're a peaceful nation. We actually don't go to war. We don't really condone it we think it's absurd i mean but if you want to have a water balloon fight you know i'm down let's do this so (laughs) you totally find me (laughs) otherwise we just don't in other words it's not a great way for you to make a name in the micronational world it's really not it's really frowned upon i mean like we most most uh of the of the bigger uh well-known uh, micronations, they tend to have spam filters put on their emails. So if like, if you're one of those people who's trying to declare war, um, you're not getting into Malasia. I'm just telling you right now. <laughs> like, the gates are closed! <laughs> right. But um, actually, Malasia got invaded by an army of TV critics um, a couple years ago. Wow, I can't... You, you don't want to face them. Well... <laughs> It was kind of funny. Uh, they were uh, claiming to be Kikassia, right? And they invaded Malasia, which is a couple acres in the within the Reno, Nevada desert. And if you're curious, you can actually go on Google Maps and search Malasia, and it'll tell you. So, um, and it will also tell you where the kingdom of Ruritania is. But um, they they came in. And they they actually got into his home, and they held him. And the the king or the king of Kikassia held uh, Ba like by the throat against the wall, and then all of the Kikassians had a coup d'état against their own king, wow. and they let and they let him go. Yeah, that's an emotional so, story. It was, but uh, you can actually find it on the Molassian website. So you, if I told the story wrong, because I read it many years ago, and I don't like to read. <laughs> so, wow. I just, it's like hard. <laughs> it's like math. <laughs> Reading is like math, but with oh, letters. Okay. 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 <laughs> yeah. It's a great show. It's a great show. It's a great show. Great show. Great show. Great yes. Show. We're, yes. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's let's. Okay. We're we're near the end here. You got this. Let let's wrap it up. Let's do this. Let's punch well, this puppy in the head. Let's make this happen. Well, I, I mean I I'm pretty much done. I went over my entire agenda. All already. right, great. How how, so, how how do you play us out now? Um. Well, I'm still getting Dark Bloom to to write me up the my theme song, so um, I can just say, uh, toodles. Well. Well, well, aren't we going to talk about the the next uh, the episode? It'll be it it, pro- oh! it it won't be next week. It'll be the, probably the following week. I'm thinking. Um. Well, the next episode has one of the funniest and most snarky. Well, I'm already next on the show. I'm already. <laughs> I'm here. I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, but you're not a micronationalist. That's true. So I, I'm just a but... micronationalist lackey. It's not the same thing. But I think you're gonna really you're gonna really dig uh, jo- Jonathan Miller, who is the head of the Navy for the King uh, for the Republic of Malaysia. Excuse me, um, and he will be on, and he is hilarious and a joy, and a delight, kind of. And, and by the way, I want to thank everybody who has uh, listened to the show and shared or whatever. 
Uh, we have had over a thousand views this episode. That's so amazing. That's pretty awesome. 1,097 views and counting. So we'll see you. Yes, we'll see you on Morticia's Micronational Minutes uh, sometime in the month of October. Either maybe yeah. next week or not, probably not next week, but either the following week or the week after that. And uh, we'll have one. What's his name again? Uh, Jonathan Miller. Jonathan Miller of? The Republic of Malasia. All right. And it'll be October. I'll, I could wear out a Halloween costume. You could. You could. I could. I thought, never I mind. Could. I won't say that. No, this is a toga because I am the Helen of Troy of internationalism. To, 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 toga. To, 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 toga. You're supposed to quote uh, Animal House, dude. It's supposed to be like toga. Toga. I was singing. Toga. I was singing the uh, <laughs> the the, uh, the kink song. Lola. Or, or, yeah, Lola. Yeah, the Lola. Yeah, yeah, I was doing Lola. I turned it into Lola. See, I do that. I'm you clever. Did, you didn't do the Weird Al version where it's like. I was thinking Yoda as I sang it. Actually, <laughs> Yoda. Yeah, 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 Yoda. I was thinking that as I was doing it. So I guess in in point of fact, I was actually channeling I my I, inner Weird Al, which is I not don't very uh, hard. Star War. I don't Star War. Oh, you don't Star War. Really? Mm -mm. I like Star Trek. You you really you don't like Star Wars? You don't you, I you, you, you didn't you didn't, rem, you didn't like it when uh, Captain Kirk killed Darth Vader? I thought that was a pretty good scene. He wasn't that was pretty great. in that one. When the USS Kirk... When the USS Enterprise was blown up by the Death Star, dude, that was the bomb. That no, was, they split and then the it. The little disc, and then the, the cyclones and then the cyclones got him. Oh, the Cylons got him. Yeah, the Cylons. You don't even know your own. The Cylons got him. Battle started. Done. Like, <laughs> Release the squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no squirrels. And on that note. Yeah. And on that note. <laughs> Oh, we're over 1,100 now. I think the squirrel reference pushed us over. There. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, we'll see you. We'll see you in October. I'm All Paul right. Gordon. And oh, by the I way, am. Paul Gordon, let me let me promote myself real quick. Paul Gordon, you can go to istv.me, find all my stuff there. I do all kinds of stuff, and you can find. You go ahead, do your promotion. Promote yourself, man. You can find me. Well, of course, on Facebook and uh, Twitter's and the Instagrams. I am Morticia Vani, or at Mort's Minutes on Twitter. Um, and tell your friends and your mom. Um, Definitely tell your, dad your mom. Because your dad already knows. Because your dad isn't and interested, but your mom totally going to be interested. <laughs> so, but, uh, but yeah, um, thank you. And we're out. Yay. <laughs>